If I say particle accelerator, you probably think of the Large Hadron Collider in CERN, an epic 27 kilometer long loop inside which particles are smashed together to uncover the mysteries of the universe. But a particle accelerator doesn't just have to be used for discovering new particles. It can also be used for analyzing archaeological remains, for designing aeroplane engines and developing new drugs and it doesn't just have to be in Switzerland. This is Diamond Light Source, just outside Oxford in the UK. They've given me free reign to have an explore, but first, I better explain how a particle accelerator works. Let's give it a try. This is Ed. Ed is an insertion device physicist. Yes. Stop giggling. You can also call me a wiggler physicist. A wiggler <laughs> physicist. Must, because we wiggle the electrons as they go around. So if you're as old as me, you may actually have seen a particle accelerator before in your house. Uh, it's known as a CRT monitor. So these are the kind of big bulbous monitors that you used to connect to a computer or have as a TV. And it's called CRT because that stands for cathode ray tube. And that would be at the back of the monitor. It would produce electrons. It would fire them out and focus them onto a phosphorus screen. And that phosphorus screen would light up when an electron hits it. And that's how you would watch your film or the news or whatever it is. How is this different? Well, this is uh, an old fashioned TV taken to the extreme. OK. OK, so the, we still have a cathode. Cathode means a negatively charged um, terminal. Yeah. Here we hold it at minus 25,000 volts, and we heat it up to boil electrons off the surface. Cool. When the electrons come off the metal, they're negatively charged. They get pushed away from this negatively charged terminal that we've got here. So this that's why it needs to be uh, needs to be negative, that's so that the negative, negative electrons get repelled away. Yeah. Got it. And, okay. And what is this? This is made of barium. How big is it? About as big as your thumb which is massive in comparison to an electron, which as far as we know is just a point. Yeah, but it's obviously, of course, absolutely mini compared to this huge yes. uh, institution you've got here. It is, yes. What happens to the electrons next? OK, we heat those up, they boil off. We've got here uh, um, a little magnet we're going to pretend is an electron. Right. OK, and we're going to send it down a little linear accelerator. I like this. And these magnets are very strong magnets. Yep. They're made of neodymium iron boron to push our fake electron here uh, up to a higher speed. Because this is a good analogy for what happens here. It's a 20 meter long copper tube. The electrons are charged particles and we need to accelerate them with electric field. So the electrons surf down a moving electric field and they're getting faster and faster and faster. And what we've got here is we're using these magnets to kind of simulate that moving electric field. Because we should say electricity and magnetism are of course interlinked. Yep. Electromagnetic radiation. Thanks Maxwell for yes, sorting that one fantastic. out. Fantastic. There we go. Okay, I'm ready. There we go. We've got to put some energy in there. Oh, whoa! There we are. Okay, that worked surprisingly That worked? Well. I want to see this in slow motion. Okay. And then we might actually be able to see what's going on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes! There we Trigger. are. Trigger. Got it. That's really clear. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yep. So there, you can really see that what we've built here is not a linear accelerator but a linear decelerator. And you can really, really see yep. speed up, slow down, speed up, speed slow up, down, slow down, speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down. That was worth it. Yep. So if you try to put north to north, then yep. they repel each other. Yep. But they don't create that amount of force. So why have we got stacks? We've got stacks here to try and uh, put a little bit more magnetic force. Because that is exactly what we're doing. We're trying to push north against north here yeah. to get that force pushing out. Because that's the idea of our rail gun in the main facility. So it's kind of like, uh, like, like a hill, yeah? It's taking energy to push it up the hill, yep. but then once it gets to the top, yep. the repulsion, the light for light repulsion, yep. pushes it down, down the, the hill, hill again. And what we've got here is another smaller hill and another smaller hill. Because if they were all the same size, and there's, because there's friction on the bottom and there's yep. air and whatnot, if yep. they're all, you wouldn't be able to get it back up the next hill. You wouldn't, no. Is this similar to what you have here? Because it has to keep going round and round the loop. Yep. And if we made this into a loop, Yep. That's not going to work. It's not going to have enough going... energy to get over it. It is not a perpetual motion machine because not they do perpetual... not exist. They do not exist. No. To make this similar to what we have here, we need to put these magnets on a cylinder and spin them around, kick the magnet at the right time as it came through here. If we can get our fake electron or our electrons coming through here at exactly the right time, it will get a kick as the magnet spins around Ooh, and, yeah. it'll, and, and it'll push. So it almost it helps pull towards it, yep, and right? then it'll push away. And then it pushes it away. Yeah. And the reason that's not a perpetual motion machine is we're putting energy in spin this magnet. And that is very similar to what we do here. The electrons are traveling around our main storage ring um, 500,000 times a second. 
and at one 500,000 times a second. Pretty much the speed of light. Pretty My much. Word. All so but. underneath us yep. right now, because we are actually sat on top of the ring, yep. and ele electrons are flying around that quickly. Yes. Yep. That is a mind boggling, but yep. pretty approximately, awesome. Thing. Approximately, let's see, one, two, three point four meters away from where we're standing. Cool. So there you have it, the particle accelerator explained with a bunch of magnets and a wiggler physicist, all done on top of a particle accelerator as electrons shoot underneath our feet at close to the speed of light. And this is only one of two films I'm making at Diamond Light Source. The second is all about the really neat stuff that the scientists are doing with all that energy that's produced. And it involves getting me covered in a whole load of paint. It's going to be messy. <laughs> Often, when science wants to get to the bottom of a mystery, it starts by looking extremely closely at something. Now, there's evidence that the microscope was invented back in the 13th century, and even Galileo's version in the 1600s could only magnify about 30 times. 